Joining me now is former Republican Congressman Joe Walsh. He's also the host of the podcast White Flag with Joe Walsh. Joe, my friend, it's always so good to have you on the show. Look, we need this assessment from you. You're a former Republican, as am I. But, you know, Republicans, as we know, they're clamoring for all of these investigations against Democrats, the FBI, DHS. But do they run the maybe credible risk, Joe, of turning voters off with all these probes? Or is the country already so polarized that Republicans are just going to go look to deliver to their base? Katie, the beauty here is that they're telling us what they're going to do. Oh, man, oh, man, I hope the American voter is listening. Republicans are telling us exactly, as you laid out, what they will do for the next two years. And it's investigate, investigate, investigate everybody in the Biden administration. Not only President Biden, they will look to impeach a bunch of people. And Katie, you nailed it. It's it's the revenge tour. So they won't lift a finger to do anything for the American people. Katie, here's the really scary thing, though. Most of my former colleagues are not crazies like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert. Most of them are enablers of the crazies. But the crazy caucus, Katie, is going to increase in numbers. There will be another 20 Marjorie Taylor Greens in that Republican caucus. And those crazies, Katie, will have Kevin McCarthy and the enablers by the short hairs. They will dictate what this Republican caucus does. And there's not a damn thing Kevin McCarthy can do about it. You know, Joe, I want to quickly read a part of this recent piece in The Atlantic by Barton Gelman. It's titled The Impeachment of Biden. Gelman writes in part, quote, Already, there is enormous demand for impeachment. A University of Massachusetts Amherst poll in May found that 68 percent of Republican voters think the House should impeach Biden. A majority expect that it will impeach him. Thwarting those expectations would be dangerous for any House Republican. Just a minute ago, Joe, you just talked about people paying attention. Should Democrats be doing a better job of getting out this information before the midterms? So voters know, oh, Joe, that this is the kind of future America Republicans will do if they take the House in November. Katie, you and I and so many others talk about our democracy hanging by a thread. Oh, my gosh. I just don't think Democrats have done a, a good enough job of showing the typical voter how that is. Uh, you mentioned in your lead, you're going to talk about it later in your show, Right now, right now, as Americans go to the polls right now, there are armed people harassing voters in Arizona all over the country trying to get them not to vote. You talk about an attack on our democracy. But again, the biggest point here is I hear from Republican voters every day. They want Joe Biden impeached. They want Hunter Biden behind bars. They're demanding all this stuff. So the Republicans in the House, Katie, are going to give it to them. Uh, and that's going to be a terrible two years for the American people. In order to get across that finish line, though, Joe, you're going to have to get certain people aligned with it. And again, we've talked about it just for a hot second a minute ago. You know, you've already had 10 Republicans that have either introduced or sponsored 21 articles of impeachment against President Biden and administration officials. But Kevin McCarthy was asked if Biden deserves to be impeached. And he said, quote, I don't see it before me right now. He's also on record saying that the country doesn't like impeachments for political purposes. But, Joe, you and I both know McCarthy isn't exactly known for his spine. So how do you anticipate he will ultimately respond to these calls for impeachment? Katie, I know Kevin McCarthy well. He's a hollow man. He has no core. All he wants is to be speaker. He has cut a deal with Marjorie Taylor Greene and the rest of the crazies. They will let him be speaker He's got to let them run the show. And again, I know I'm a broken record. If you're tired of Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert, I'm sorry. If Republicans take back the House, there's going to be another 30 of them. They have McCarthy by the short hairs. Uh, and there's very little McCarthy can do because all he cares about is becoming speaker. He sold his soul, Katie, to these people, just like he sold his soul two years ago to Trump. 
Putting impeachment of President Biden aside, could we see other targets? VP Kamala Harris, DHS head Alejandro Mayorkas, and other members of the administration being impeached? Because it sure seems, Joe, that House Republicans are looking for scalps here. Katie, you and I aren't exaggerating when, when we say it's going to be two years of investigate, 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 and impeach as many people as you can. I don't think it will Biden be just President Biden. I think they'll go after the Attorney General, Merrick Garland. I continue to hear that from the base. That's a scalp. Uh, that's a scalp, excuse me, that the Republican Party base wants desperately. Yes, they will try to impeach everybody. You know what, Katie? The American people are used to divided government, but typically divided government means we're arguing about policy. This is way beyond mm -hmm. that. There will be no policy arguments. There will be no policy nothing. This is going to be one party going after the other party on just on, on just personal stuff, as you called it, Katie, a revenge tour. So I've got a multiple choice question for you, Joe Walsh, for Republicans. What does power in Congress really mean for them in the MAGA era? A, just settling scores. B, paving the way for the return of their cult leader, Donald Trump. C, finally dismantling key programs like Social Security and Medicare, or D, all of the above? It's all of the above, Katie, because the mega base, the Republican Party base, has given up on democracy. They want a strong man to rule this country to give them their America back. That's where they are, and so it's all of the above. You know, Joe, the thing that I appreciate, um, and I know that you get a lot of flack sometimes on social media because you don't always pander to what people want to hear, right? So the question I have for you before I have to let you go, Joe, is the following. It sounds to me when I see your tweets, you and I speak, there's just a faction of America that's just never going to see the truth. It runs the gamut from the election deniers to the QAnon believers, et cetera. If there's that if there's that sect of people that just are not listening and could not care less. And then you obviously have some measure of an echo chamber in fairness on the far left. Right. That is saying what it says and is firmly entrenched at where it needs to be. And I think properly in the right side of democracy. What is your recommendation then, Joe, kind of looking at both sides and hearing both sides for the people in the middle that maybe are on the fence? It's hard to believe that people would be on the fence when democracy is in such peril. But what would you say to the people that are undecided as they go into November's midterms? Katie, it's all those people in the middle uh, who are reachable and they don't understand what we mean when we say our democracy is under attack. We all have to do a better job of showing them how our democracy is under attack. Katie, I talk to people every day who are in the middle and they don't really like either party. And typically, these low-information voters tell me, I don't know if I can say this on TV, Republicans are a-holes, they're jerks, but Democrats are elites who don't understand me. I hear that over and over. And sadly, Katie, most of these people will tend to vote for the a-hole. Democrats have to do a better job of relating to regular Americans who are just super confused right now because they don't think Democrats are talking to them. Very interesting. Joe Walsh, as always, thank you for being here and for sharing your insight and continue to sound the alarm. It takes people like you out there to say, look, I've been on that other side. I know exactly how much of a cesspool it can be. And I can tell you we're better off not having that happen again. I appreciate you. Katie, you're the best.